It's great to be in New York City. Yeah! Yes, indeed. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Boy, we got a show for you tonight. Oh, I'm so excited. It's that time of the year again. Oh, I woke up and instantly started drooling when I thought about tonight's show. <laughs> Drool all over me. It's that time where I open up the old treasure chest of those cherished recipes. You know where I'm going? Yeah. Best eating of the year, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh. I haven't done this recipe in a while. And I encourage people all the time, you know, I talk turkey. I tell them. <laughs> don't have to wait till that time of the year, but I haven't done this recipe myself in a while. And oh yeah, babe, wait till you see my brined and roasted turkey. I'm gonna show you what I'm brining tonight. And then, my favorite dressing. Well, I gotta say Hilda's is probably my favorite, but right next to it, I'm gonna make a little cornbread and andouille sauce and stuffing to go with this turkey. I'm gonna show you. I'm also gonna show you how to uh, take some sweet potatoes and we're gonna mash them with a little brandy and I'm gonna show you how to put them in these orange cups. Oh yeah, we're gonna actually set up a whole Thanksgiving dinner for you. Brussels sprouts, a little top with walnuts. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. That's what I say. We got another treat for you guys because Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band's in the house. Oh, yeah, Turkey Treasures, you know where. Right here, Emerald Live. I thought you were in the cheap seats over here. <laughs> no way. Good to have you all. See, I really meant it. I, I was setting up like a whole little Thanksgiving. Empty plates here, but not for long. Gonna uh, just kind of set the table. Got a few nice centerpieces. Of course, you gotta have some olives, you know. You know, it's uh, that time of the year, fall, when these things are around, these pomegranates. You like these? Yeah. I love them. You know, you squeeze, they got all these little seeds in them, you know. But what's good, you press them, squeeze them, they make like a little juice. You can put that on your turkey, too. Oh, good stuff. All right. Here's the, uh, this year's brining notes. Every time I do this, I just sort of, like, tweak it a little bit more, you know? And, uh, brining turkeys uh, in the last couple of years... Tell me there's not like a brining squad in here or anything. <laughs> but uh, it's very, very simple to do. Like I said earlier, don't wait till just Thanksgiving to do this. You can do this any time of the year. But here's the simple rules. For each gallon of water, that's what we're going to brine it in, you use a half a cup of salt and a half a cup of sugar. I prefer brown sugar. So if your turkey is that big and you got... <laughs> What's up? What did you... I, I, it wasn't me. I think somebody said something about turkey. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So let me tell you what we're going to do with this bird. <laughs> I got a gallon of water here. I've got kosher salt, brown sugar. You want to make sure that that gets really good and dissolved. Then, 
If you don't have a pot this big for your turkey, you can always do this. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? The secret word of the day. Turkey's the secret word of the day. <laughs> All right, so for this bird, I got to get it started at least. Sugar, salt, water. Dissolve that really good. Then, oranges and lemon. Squeeze the juice right in there. Then, lemons. And the acidity of the uh, citrus is really going to not only taste good, but in the brining process, it's really going to crisp later on when we cook this bird. <laughs> All right, now, once that's ready, we're going to use some thyme, and if you don't have fresh thyme, you can use dry thyme. And some rosemary. You just kind of scrape that rosemary down like that. And now we're ready to brine our turkey. Yeah. Guys, you're killing me here. Now, when you, uh, when you get your bird, <laughs> this is a fairly good-sized bird what most people would cook. You want to clean it, rinse it really, really good. Remove the gizzards and all that, you know, all this stuff, the neck. But don't throw it away. We're going to come back to that. Then, you're ready to just kind of put your bird right inside of this brine. What I said earlier about the water. See, right now, if I had to add another half a gallon of water to this, no. you'd do the math. Another quarter cup of salt, quarter cup of brown sugar, right? Okay? So it's a half cup, half cup per gallon. Just keep that in mind. Four hours minimum, I prefer overnight. That's what we have right here. I'm going to take the turkey. I'm going to take the turkey out of the brine. I'm going to stuff the inside of it. I'm going to pat it dry, and I'm going to stuff it with some bay leaves and thyme, some celery, onions, and carrots, more citrus. Then I'm just going to tie the legs up. Then I'm going to just smother it all with a little bit of butter and some essence. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what our turkey's going to look like. Stick around. <laughs> Networks talk and turn. Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I'm pulling out all the stops tonight for a little special turkey. Take it out of the brine, let it drain, pat it dry. Took the carrot, celery, and onions, maripois, thyme, bay leaf, some more orange, just jammed it right inside of the cavity. What's left? Got here in a little raft, what I call a little raft, a little vegetable raft. <laughs> Butter, half stick, hey, why not a whole stick? It's Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> what you want to do? Stick that butter in all the kind of... I mean, really get to know that turkey. You know what I mean? Just wherever you can jam it in there. Then, going to season the bird now with some essence. Then I'm going to show you a trick. The trick is, I tied the legs. What you're going to do is you're going to put the breast side down first. Okay? 350 degrees. Season both sides. I hate one side of tasting food. <laughs> and then, 350 degrees, 
We're going to put the bird inside the oven, breast side down, for the first hour. I'll show you what we're, what we're going to do and why we're going to do that later. The reason is, you see, all the juices are going to go down to the breast. Keep it nice and juicy. Then we'll flip it over and we'll crisp up the skin later. First hour, 350. You all with me so far? Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to show you my favorite stuffing. All one of them. Got the heat on and a little skillet here, about ah, medium, medium high heat. Going to take some andouille sausage. Now, if you can't find andouille, you could use chorizo. You could use any kind of sausage. It's a pork fat thing, you know. <laughs> what that, what you can then do, you can do this a day, two days before Thanksgiving. I got some interesting stati statistics for you. Listen to these. 95% of all Americans eat turkey at Thanksgiving. The average turkey last year was about 15 pounds. 675 million pounds were consumed last Thanksgiving. That's a lot of turkey, man. All right, andouille, or whatever pork sausage you have, chorizo, linguiça. My friends in Fall River have, probably have a little linguiça. Once you start extracting some of the flavor out of that sausage, that's what we're doing. Then we're gonna add some onions, bell pepper, celery. That would be the trinity, right? There's a test later. We're going to season this with some salt. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and some cayenne pepper. <laughs> now, once this starts getting tender, that's what we want to do now is cook so this is getting tender. I've got a little chicken broth here. Or you could use turkey broth. Just water if you want. Now, in my skillet, I made a basic recipe for a cornbread. Now, folks, what we get a lot of that www.foodnetwork. thing is people, a lot of people when they cook, especially like a family meal like this, you know, a big meal, they freak out that they got multiple things. So just have a food plan. Think about a second what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish. Example, you could make this on Tuesday. Put your stuffing together on Tuesday or even Wednesday and just keep it in the ice box until you're ready to bake, to bake it. So that's one less thing you gotta worry about, okay? What you do is when this thing cools, in this bowl here, I've got a few pieces of regular white bread, just gonna crumble that up. So it's a texture thing. Then, cornbread, just crumble that up. I mean, come on, this isn't like rocket science or anything here, you know? <laughs> He's crumbled the cornbread. <laughs> Get the kids involved, they could crumble it up for you. All right, so I got white bread, cornbread, andouille, and the trinity, salt and pepper in there. Now watch. Couple of eggs. That's also going to help not only add a little richness, but it's going to hold it together, sort of bind it a little. Now, here's what we're going to do. Going to add some garlic in here. In this casserole dish, I just buttered it lightly. And what we're going to do now once this is nice and tender, we're going to take our chicken broth, a couple of cups of that, and add it right over in our bread mixture. We'll mix this in now like such. It's going to be good and moist. You want it to be good and moist because as it bakes, 
some of the moisture is going to evaporate, but you still want to have a moist stuffing. So once this is nice and tender, we'll add that right in there. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> I'd be happy if I was at cornbread right now. <laughs> going to mix this in. Now, folks, look. If for some reason it's not moist enough, I mean, this is moist, but it's not wet. Don't freak out. What? Little H2O. See? Or maybe you got a little bit more stock. A little more salt. A little pepper. All right, look. Now, see the consistency of that? All right, now I'm going to add this into my pan, cover it with foil, put that in a 350-degree oven. When we come back... Another notch! Stick around! Watch it! This Food Network program brought to you... Cooking up some treasures from the old chest, treasure chest. <laughs> that brine turkey. <laughs> Let's go check on it real quick. I want to show you something. Remember I told you the first hour, right? Breast side down and we flip it over. At that point, when we flip it over, then I take out a little foil like this, you see? and then cover it with foil. Look at how that baby's looking. See that? Can you see it? All right, look. See how it's looking like that? I got it on a little rack. Oh yeah, babe. Drippings coming down. Then our stuffing. That's down here baking away, the andouille cornbread stuffing. It's best to have a cooking thermometer, particularly for roasts. In this case, our bird. <laughs> so we're looking for like 165 degree internal temperature for this turkey. That's the safe zone. It's a safe zone. Another component to our meal, sweet potatoes. On a pan, 350, 375, roast them until they're fork tender. Then let me show you this. This is what they are here. And then let them cool for about five or ten minutes and then peel them. The great thing about this, they get all nice and sweet and gooey and delicious. Well, now we're going to even kick them up another notch. Watch this. So we're going to take our peeled sweet potatoes now. And I thought about doing something decorative at the same time. Yet, you know... Not too expensive to do. That's why I'm using these oranges. Watch this. Take an orange, good size orange like this, cut it in half. With a little paring knife, you can just kind of go around the edges of the orange. And then once you start it, you can work your way through the center like this, you see? But not go through the bottom. And then what we'll do is we'll just take and scoop that out and save that. I'm using just a little measuring spoon. It's not like some, uh, you know, $89 gadget. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't have to get them so clean. We'll keep those there. Show you one more. So we got our peeled sweet potatoes. And you want to kind of stay inside of the uh, white of the orange here, then work the paring knife into the center. Then that measuring spoon would just take it out. See? Take that juice down. All right. I thought these would be pretty decorative. Again, you can do these the day before. 
take the stress level down another notch. <laughs> See? Yeah, yeah, you gotta do that. When you're ready, what I do is I just take a, you know, a spoon or you know, a masher. We'll just kind of break these warm sweet potatoes up a little bit into pieces, you see? And here's what we do. Gonna take brown sugar, three eggs, some orange juice, which came from those oranges. We'll take the sweet potatoes, put those pieces in there. You guys like sweet potatoes? Yeah. Now what we'll do, you can do this with one of them handheld deals too, you know? Oh, just go easy. Don't want to make any enemies here. Sorry, ladies. Don't worry if we got a big budget here. <laughs> More than happy to get you some club soda. <laughs> Once it starts incorporating, then I got a stick of butter. Oh, come on. <laughs> then I'm gonna add some cinnamon in them. <laughs> then, little fresh grated nutmeg. This is when you really get it, you know, probably have one of these, probably don't ever use it, but, you know, it's got a little house in here, you know, you open it up, you take it out. So what we'll do now is we'll make sure we got a little, nothing better than fresh grated nutmeg, a little fresh. Yeah, fresh grated nutmeg, there you have it. And then a little whipping cream, or heavy cream. I'm gonna add just a little, bam, just a little. Okay, so you guys are with me so far on that? Yeah. All right, good. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, it's not gonna be perfectly smooth. It's still gonna be still a little chunks in there. I like that texture thing. But we're gonna mix all the ingredients in there and then like I said, you can do this the day before. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our orange bottoms and stuff them. I'll leave the kids' Oreos alone, will you? <laughs> nice, nice like this, we're just gonna stuff them up. Now folks, if you don't wanna do this, the other alternative is to do it in another buttered casserole pan. And then I would like just top them with a bunch of marshmallows and bake them like that. Maybe even put some pecans on them. But you could also put marshmallows right on the top of these. Ha <laughs> ha. See? Feeling the love. So we've got our turkey in, our stuffings in. Earlier I had said to you that you didn't want to throw out. Perfect. Sometimes I amaze myself. <laughs> so when we're ready, we're gonna bake these in the oven. Earlier I had said to you, don't throw those necks and you know the stuff that comes in there. Rinse them off really good. Here's what I do with them, the necks and the gizzards and stuff. I put them in a little sauce pot, cover them about two, three times over with water little carrot, little onion, maybe some garlic. And I just like, let it simmer. Come up to a boil, let it simmer. Simmer, simmer, simmer. <laughs> simmer, 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 simmer. <laughs> Half hour, 45 minutes. Then I turn the heat off and save that stock. And then I strain it. Like this. Now I've got some turkey stock here. Because you gotta have gravy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and chop up the gizzard take some of the meat out of the neck. And while I'm doing that, with some butter here, I'm gonna start a roux. When we come back, I'll show you how to finish this incredible simple turkey gravy for your bird. 
And then I'm gonna take the mystery out of Brussels sprouts. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Doc Gibbs and the MLI Band. <laughs> Introduce the guys real quick, Doc. Real quick, we have Ted Thomas Jr. on drums. That's yeah. it. Yeah. On saxophone, Lewis Nicky Taylor. Yeah. And everybody knows the imaginable Cliff Starkey. Yeah. And Doc Gibbs, of course. We're talking turkey yeah. here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a quick update. Here's a quick update on the bird hotline. <laughs> I'm making a roux here. I'm going to talk about that. Take the turkey out of the oven. 165 degrees on our little thermometer thing. Okay? I've got our pan drippings on the stove. I'm going to talk about that in a second. All right? You with me so far? Yeah. I'm going to talk to you about this gravy because we get so many of those WW dot things for gravy, whether it's Thanksgiving or not, I'm going to show you it real quick. Let's go to the oven, get a little update over here. Our sweet potatoes are inside of our oranges. Oh, babe, they're looking good. Can you see those? Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, happy, happy. We're getting close to setting up the, uh, the old table. And our dressing, I took the foil off of our andouille cornbread dress dressing. Oh, and it's just about done. Mmm. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> now, the bird we're going to let rest. We're going to release him, which means we're going to let him free. All right, he's better already. I'm going to leave that stuff in there, though. <sighs> now, you remember we took the neck, the carcass, you know, that neck thing and the giblets and all that? We made the stock, right, which is right here. We trimmed off. We got the meat for that. While we were in a commercial, what we did is I made this roux. Now, you can see it's not a blonde roux. It's a little darker. It's the color of peanut butter right now. However dark you want your sauce, your gravy, don't jack up the stove. You know, that's what these things are for, okay? <laughs> Don't jack it up. You know, easy, it's a food of love thing. Medium's just perfectly fine. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna... Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna take this off the stove and I'm gonna deglaze my roasting pan with some wine because, see that stuff down there? We call those the granines. Okay, see that? Oh, that's all good stuff. That's, that's love. That's just barnacles of love right there, you know? So you want to just make sure you get that all squared away. Oh, and a piece of onion don't bother me in there either. Get all of that like, ooh, ah, yeah. Are you with me? Here's what we're gonna do now. Now, we're gonna turn the heat up a little bit. It's a pretty good color. See, that's, a, that's how the color of the gravy's gonna be. That's fine with me. So, now we're gonna take our turkey juice that we had, add it in there, and we're gonna just slowly work in the roux. Okay? Now, it will never be at its full thickening ability until it comes to a boil, to a simmer. Remember that. Whether you're making roux, cornstarch, whatever. And 
you can see that this is going to have some lumps. That's when the lump master comes into play. <laughs> we take a little whisk like this. That's what they make these things for. See, and we're going to whisk it. And we're going to break down some of those lumps. And while that's happening, we're going to let some of that wine evaporate. Then eventually what we're going to do is we're going to add that, once it evaporates a little, into that. Love plus love is more love. You know? All right. Here's what we're going to do now. People, they have no clue when you say, well, did you blanch the vegetables? They're like, Blanche, I never met her. <laughs> you get Brussels sprouts. We get so many, you know, that requests and emails and stuff. Let me just show you the mystery right out of it. You gotta trim the bottom of the Brussels sprout. It's like a little cabbage. Oh, somebody else lost their Oreos. <laughs> and then you gotta put a little X or a little V or whatever you wanna put in here. And you do that. You gotta prep. Oh, give his Oreos back. <laughs> See, you gotta prep this like this. And then what it means is blanching. You just take water and salt. The salt's gonna keep the greenness, you see? And we're gonna blanch these. Just a few minutes. See, they're already getting green? Well, that's how these are right here. These are blanched, which means they're not all the way cooked, but they're a little bit cooked. They're sort of half between. They're almost like fork tender. Now, we're gonna take some butter. We're gonna take some shallot or red onion or white onion, whatever you want. Just a couple of quick that was a multiple bam. Some salt and pepper. We're going to cook that about three, four minutes. Add some walnuts that I put in the food processor, the Brussels sprouts. Oh, when we come back. Oh, ho! Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, babe. Stick around. Doc Gibbs, Annie MRI Band. Okay, folks, we're going to uh, take you through this here. We had our brined turkey, 165, 165 degree internal temperature, just simple garnishes with grapes, a little bit of parsley. Bring that to the table. Then we have our beautiful sweet potato stuffed oranges. Those are done. We took them out. Our andouille cornbread dressing. We've got that now on the table, okay? The Brussels sprouts, after the shallots or the onions in the butter, we added walnuts, we got some flavor out of them. We added the blanched Brussels sprouts. Then what we're gonna do is just season them now with a little bit of salt and some pepper. Hot vegetable, ready to go now. And what we'll do is we'll just put that right in a little serving dish like such with the walnuts on top and let me tell you something else you just sprinkle a little bit of parmesan cheese on them like that perfectly perfect 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 now we've got our green vegetable as well and we'll just sort of add that there and the pan juices have kind of gotten thick why is because I added a little bit of, maybe a teaspoon of flour to that. And I'm gonna add that now into our gravy. Just kind of strain that through. And I've got all the stuff here. That's why you strain it out, you see? Get all the flavor, but get that all left behind. Now, let me show you. Look at how our gravy looks now. 
See that? So we got that ready to bring that to the table. Now what you want to do, folks, you want to taste it and see what you want to add. Does it need more salt? Does it need more pepper? Wow. Oh. You just put that on some bread, forget about it, you know? I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. Then I'm going to garnish it. I'm just going to garnish it with some green onions. Garnish it with a little bit of parsley. Beautiful. It's going to be a great gravy. Now, got to have dessert. What I'm going to do... Oh, yeah. In this pan right here, I'm going to take some butter, brown sugar, some honey, regular sugar, and I've melted some chocolate right here over a double boiler. Oh yeah, babe. <laughs> now, once the sugar gets dissolved, as I'm doing right here, then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of whipping cream, some vanilla, and some walnuts. It's like kind of almost making like a walnut praline, if you will. Okay? Then we're going to take that mixture, fold it in the chocolate. Oh, when you come back, you'll see how we're going to finish our Thanksgiving table. Stick around! <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. You know, earlier I had said that we melted this chocolate. We were going to incorporate it inside of this tot. That is not true. The chocolate is for a sauce. We've got the butter, the brown sugar, regular sugar in here, about three, four minutes. Like I said, it was like making a praline. Now we're going to add the walnuts. And you wait to do that because we want to extract some of the flavor out of that. And a little bit of heavy cream. And I like to add just a little bit of vanilla in there as well. Now, I'm going to cook this up. You'll see exactly what I, what I mean here. And then, you take a pie shell in a top pan so that the bottom can come out of this thing, you see? And when this thing cooks about another minute, you pour this filling that we have right into this. And then, oh yeah, babe. <laughs> then what happens, about 375 degrees, we're going to bake this for about 20, 25 minutes. And what it looks like when it bakes, 20, 25 minutes, looks all good and golden brown like this here. Okay? Oh yeah. And then to finish it, you take a little bit of that chocolate sauce when you're ready from your double boiler. Take a little bit of that chocolate sauce. See, because you can bring this to the table too. And then, here's how I would serve it. I just serve it like this. Or if you wanted to serve it individual, what you could do is just cut a wedge. Now, it's going to be like brittle, you see? That's what kind of, it's very dense, but very, very good. Just serve a piece of wedge like this. See how dense that is? It's like candy. And then what I do is drizzle the chocolate sauce over it like this. If you want to put a little whipped cream, you can. You can put a little bit of Nacello or a Gramonier, a few drops of that on there, you know? That's how simple it is, okay? Now, when you're ready, you add those cooked giblets and stuff that we did. Okay, and we'll add a gravy, a little at a time, perfect, we'll keep that warm. All right, I think we got it all here, guys. I think we got it all, the Brussels sprouts, we got the sweet potatoes in the orange, the turkey, go ahead, help yourself, I'll get dessert. Hey, I'm Emma Lagasse, I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody!